All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Sorry about the few issues. We had to kind of reboot and start over. Um, for all the people on Android, y'all know where to go. Y'all go to the Discord, go to the Green Tea Room. That's where all the Android users are at. Um, the iPhone users. <laughs> yes, I've crossed over to the other side. Um, y'all can sit here and, you know, chat in this chat. But I have my Discord pulled up as well so I can see what the Android users are saying. Um, so I wanted to just kind of talk to you guys about just everything that's been going on. Umber, can you mute your phone real quick? Because there's a bunch of background static. Okay, thank you. So it's been a lot. Like this documentary was a lot to unpack. And I just wanted to thank everybody, you know, who just really helped. So I kind of want to explain everything because I see there's some people, of course, in their feelings, honey, um, about why they don't have access to the documentary. Where is it at? I'm not promoting it as something for everybody to go watch or, you know, y'all go join this or, you, you know, that's not what I'm doing. I've made the documentary for people who are already paid members either through Discord, through YouTube, or through Patreon. These are people who support me wholeheartedly month after month. Everybody's not in the Discord, but some people just support just to support. They support me on Patreon. They support me on YouTube memberships just to show my channel love because I get so many things demonetized on my channel. So that's why I wasn't promoting it or saying where to go watch it. It was for people who are already in those spaces. You know what I'm saying? And so when I post things on my Instagram, even though that's public for everybody to see, you have to understand that sometimes when I post stuff on Discord, people miss it because as soon as I make an announcement, everybody comes running to the room. They're, po they're posting gifts and memes. So a lot of the announcements get missed by people. So I always post things on Instagram. So that way people on these different platforms understand when we're having meetings, when, you know, things are going to be available for them. So it wasn't like I'm purposely trying to leave people out, but I'm purposely making stuff for people who, who genuinely support my channel. And I'm not going to apologize for that because this was a lot of work to put this together. And when everything first broke, it was like, it was just a struggle, like trying to stay focused on the wedding, but then seeing just all the symbolism and all the crazy stuff and I remember while I was getting ready for the wedding, I started like going, I was in the, in the celebrity chat room on the Discord and I'm watching videos and I'm conversating with like pink nail polish and a few other people. And she's posting stuff about Travis Scott and his beef with security. And literally as we're watching it, videos are being made private. Like while, while we're in the middle of the videos, things are getting pulled down. Things are being private. As soon as people are posting links, you go to click it, it's gone. So at that point, I just made an announcement. I, and I added everyone. I said, look, I'm dealing with this wedding situation. I want to focus on that. But there's so much stuff that needs to be unpacked with this astral world. Whatever y'all see, please download it to your phones, re-upload it to Discord, email it to me, DM it to me. Um, if you don't know how to download stuff, just screen record it. And people went crazy. Like people just started sending me everything because they were trying to literally wipe, they were trying to wipe all this stuff off the internet. A lot of these videos you can't even find because as soon as people were uploading, you'd go, they'd be gone. So, you know, we were just, I had everybody. I was like, just please collect all the info. I'll sort through it. I'll figure it out. Just, you know, get the info for me because I can't do two things at once and I can't be dealing with this dark stuff and I, you know, and I'm celebrating my cousin's wedding. So I just want to thank everybody from Umbertone to the members of the discord to people even on Instagram in my DMS that were sending me so much information, even rich Lux, honey, he, he was sending me, you know, videos and stuff that he had acquired. I'm like, okay, damn, look at you trying to be woke, <laughs> you know? So it was a lot of people that was just sending me stuff, sending me stuff. And it was a lot, you know, because just researching, just because somebody sends you something, you still have to understand, you still have to be able to tell a story and understand what's going on and what you're watching. So once I got back that Monday, for eight hours, I just sat here in my office and combed through this stuff, combed through every single video, listening to every scream, every cry, watching people just trample each other. So by the time I did that Zoom meeting later on on Monday, 
I was like men like you could tell like I wasn't like my regular you know clowny jolly self like I was like low-key like traumatized because of all the stuff I had seen and I was like you know what I'm gonna do this I said but y'all gotta understand there's so much stuff that I've been giving because at that point I wasn't even done with going through all the information I was only maybe like four hours in I didn't go to bed till about one o'clock that morning and then when I was posting the stuff about the demons, like where you could physically see demons walking on the screen, like that scared the hell out of me because I'm watching that at one o'clock. And so it was just a lot. So I just thank you guys for being patient. Thank you, Miss Ronaldo, for um, the prayer that you led for everybody that night because I needed that prayer because it was so much deep stuff, you know? And so I really just appreciate just all the love and support. So when I got the editing, I started the editing Tuesday after I did all the research to one o'clock in the morning, Monday. And, you know, I want to put into chapters so that way people could easily digest it. I didn't want you to just be hit. And I wanted to break it up where if you needed a break or you need to come back, because it was so much information, you would know that you left off on chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, et cetera. But um, I can say for, for me being an editor, this was like, it was just low key comforting to be able to do this. Cause I haven't been, I have not had the freedom to create in, in so long because YouTube does not allow you. So I need y'all to understand. I'm not going to be posting videos like this on YouTube. For me, it's not about the clicks and views. I rather get the information to the people who want it and who want to receive it. I don't care about the views. I could have posted on YouTube and got probably hundreds and thousands of views. It wasn't about that. YouTube is to the point now where they censor so much. And I just wanted the freedom to really express everything that was in my mind, everything that I saw. And I wanted to put it in a visual form for everybody to easily digest it. And I couldn't have did that with YouTube because they'd have been copywriting the music. They'd have been copywriting the graphics. Um, you know, I wanted to show clips from uh, the, the Pale Man. I wanted to show movie clips and, and not have my stuff taken down. I wanted to play the music. I wanted to make all the connections with the Squid Game and not have my stuff copywritten, you know, and taken down and demonetized and all that stuff. So for me, this was the easiest way to do it. I kind of got scared because it got so long. And I, I literally could have went another hour because I also had screenshots amounts of screenshots of conversations that people were having on reddit on instagram on snapchat where people were saying things in comment sections and people would screenshot it send it to me so that could have been like a whole nother hour just showing the screenshots but i'm like nobody's gonna want to read that for an hour so i narrowed it down to the most important parts and the most important connections which was in those three hours and um and I was nervous because it was so long, but my mods and everybody was like, no, just keep going. Just keep going. I bet you it's not even going to feel like three hours. So when I got the feedback from people, it made me feel so good that people were just able to sit and watch it and not even realize that it was three hours. I remember uh, Papa Color was like, I have to go back and look. She's like, I can't believe that was a three hour video. Because she's like, by the time it got done, I was like, I wanted more. And people were like, I have ADHD and I can't even sit still for 20 minutes. So the fact that you did that for three hours and I sat glued, that's what I wanted. I wanted you guys to not focus on the time, but focus on the information and understand the severity of the situation. Because like I said, this is way bigger than Travis Scott. Um, it shocked me how many kids were saying, even in, in the videos, that they didn't believe in God, but they called on God that night. We are fighting a spiritual battle, you know, and I've been saying this for a while and I know I, I'm like the resident lunatic of YouTube, unfortunately, that's what people have pointed me as, they've shadow banned my channel, but it's very interesting how a lot of the things that not just me, but so many of us have been feeling and have been saying, we're now seeing it, we're seeing it manifest, you know, and it, it's frightening, it's frightening the things that's going on and and think about even how I feel, because before I left for the wedding, I told people in Houston, I said, be careful going out. Remember, that was my last podcast, my last news show. I said, people in Texas, people in Houston, be careful going out because y'all's 911 services are going to voicemail. Remember that? 
yeah, I was like, you guys are going to voicemail when you call 911. So just be mindful of what's going on. I talked about this on my live stream a few weeks ago about how they're no longer answering 911 calls in a lot of cities. It's happened in places like Atlanta, and now they're talking about it because it happened in Houston where somebody, I believe they died from a heart attack, when their family members went to call 911, people are getting 911 recordings, basically saying 911 cannot answer right now. It's just really disturbing. Hopefully they'll be able to find a happy medium, but in the meantime, just be aware you know, when it comes to these emergency situations, you may have to be the one to step up. And, and drive. so it was just weird. Like that was like my last. Oh, so. and then when I find out that all this stuff is happening in Houston and people couldn't call 911 and, you know, there was no connections. It, it's just crazy. It's, it's mind blown. So thank you guys once again, like I stated, for the support. Um, Umbertone, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone. I wanted you to come on here, sis. Um, hey. <laughs> so once again thank you for like a lot of the clips and the things that you sent me i know we talked off and on during mm -hmm. this process like you know bouncing things off of each other like do you see this did you peep the hellhounds did you right. peep this imagery so i really appreciate it because it was a lot going on in my mind definitely was and i just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your um life just to put that together for us just to piece it together chronologically. What is the word? Just chronologically. You know, in a time. <laughs> yes, dang. Oh my goodness, I couldn't get it. Yes, that. <laughs> Just to put it together for us, for people who didn't know, for people who did know, and, you know, for people who didn't see everything that was roaming around, because it was so much information, but it was good. It was good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it definitely was. And I wanted you to speak on the young man. Um, if you guys remember, the, the young man that first came out with everything, that's what first gave me chills when I woke up that morning. Because wow. Kenya was like one of the first ones. She hit me up at like 8 o'clock in the morning. I, and mind you, I just got in from the club at 4 a.m. And Kenya's like, wake up. Look at all the stuff that happened to Astroworld. <laughs> and she's sending me videos and clips. And I'm just like, wait, what? Dang. You know, but... <laughs> The young man who came out and was like, you know, this was just so demonic. And I really looked up to Travis. Mm -hmm. um, you said he's had a whole spiritual awakening. Because remember, his name was Diablo. Uh, right, right. It was, okay, so he explained that, like, when everything happened and he did the live, it was a bunch of comments, you know, people saying this, saying that. And one of the main things was, okay, you're saying all of this. You seeing demons, you hearing screams, all of that, but you're you got Diablo in your name, and that's Spanish mm -hmm. for devil, right? So, right after he did that viral clip, he was posting a few things, and then he said he was going to go live to explain everything that he's seen. So he said that he came up with Diablo Santiago because his favorite car was a Lamborghini Diablo, mm -hmm. and he wanted something to rhyme with Diablo. So he chose Santiago and then took out the S and then put the X. And then he was, well, he went live, but it didn't say he like went live twice. And right. they were each, the first one, I still, I still have it recorded. It's 36 minutes. And then the second one is like 44 minutes to 45. But it's just like a bunch of people coming on, you know, asking him questions when he was just trying to get people who were there to you right. know, back him up. And people who had missing loved ones or people who had people who died, he wanted to share their information, their GoFundMes and everything. So the first live, um, he's talking about how it was the first concert he ever went to. And that's so unfortunate because, you know, concerts, normally when somebody goes to a concert and come back, they're like, oh, I freaking love that person. The show was so good. Mm -hmm. The scenery the stage lights everything but he was shook to the core when he got back to that car yeah he he, he and, saw the devil that night he wasn't lying when he said that yeah, they, they went down yeah. to hell and i know you said since then he's changed his name and every time now that he's trying to speak about mm -hmm. spiritual stuff and god those live streams are not staying up right they're not saving they're crashing they're not you know so the so only like I, one mm -hmm. 
the only ones that are up there was I think like the third or fourth one he did with an Hispanic dude. And then there's another one up there he did with a Hispanic lady like two days ago, I want to say a day or two ago. Those were the only ones. But like when he was first going live, like the first live and the second one, he kept trying to swipe his phone, trying to add people, um, trying to end it and try to start again because it was it was so awkward because it was long pauses of silence and him just tapping on his phone. Um, mm-hmm. His phone would just shut off on its own. And he come back and be like, oh, y'all, I had to go charge my phone. I had to do this and do that because it just cut off on its own. I didn't mean it. It's just weird stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know, when you're dealing with that type of energy, it's, it's a lot, you know, and it was a lot of things going on. And even watching the video, like I was saying, when we had the discord meeting, um, When we look at the Mm -hmm. Bible version of how they describe hell, right? They're in a pit of fire and they're burning and they're screaming, help me, help me. I can't breathe. And, you know, and their hands are frailing. There were certain parts of that video where it looked like the living embodiment of hell. When you're hearing grown men shrieking Mm -hmm. like children. I I did not get that scream out my head. I couldn't hear because it was like, it was clear. He was like but six rows behind people. He still had his hand reached out for somebody to grab him. He was like, was everything in his throat? Bro, right here. Right here, bro. Come yeah. on. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then to find out when the, the one, I don't know if you saw the news with the white boy that was talking, how he's saying every four minutes, you're just getting pushed through the water. You know, it's like a water, a sea of people. Yes, you're just getting pushed. Yes. He said every four minutes, it was a different face. But what creeped me out is he said that wherever you positioned your arms is how your arms were stuck. So stayed. if you had your arms yeah. above your head trying to breathe, it stayed up there. And then if your arms Shut were down below on. by the side, it stayed there. So imagine if you're an artist. And you're looking in the crowd. You're right. thinking that all these people are waving their arms, right? Because it's like a sea. It's a motion. No, no, you wave your arms in the hair. Just wave like you just don't care. Right. Oh. But these people are not voluntarily waving their arms. Their arms are stuck there because they're packaged in. And then they're waving because of the wave of the people. Tell me that's not energy. Right. Mm. Child. Whew, it was just so much. He said before he even got there, it was like he had a feeling of anxiety and that his friends had stopped to eat before they had went to you know the event and everything and he could not swallow anything like he could chew and do what he needed to do but he found it weird that he couldn't swallow his food and he just didn't know why he was feeling angst and he couldn't let his throat you know do what it do and he was like at that moment, he didn't know what was going on. Nothing had happened. He hasn't even gone to the event, ain't seen nothing, and you know, experienced anything. So he was wondering why he was feeling like that even before. And then at the pre-show, that's that's how he was able to do what he did when the time came for Travis to perform when he sat on the rail near the back of the VIP. Because in the pre-show, he felt like how he was getting pushed and mm-hmm. squished a little, but it wasn't as bad as it was in the nighttime because in the day is the pre-show and you know mm-hmm. they had rides and other vendor stuff out there so everybody was um doing that as travis has started to perform he sat on the rail right where like the barricade where you could get out just in case you know if something had happened to him because he seen that it was a whole bunch of people there and he mm-hmm. didn't want to get smushed. And w- in that picture that I sent you, he's a small statured dude. Yeah, he's so, very you know, small. Yeah. Yes. If he had gotten caught up in that, who knows where he'd be? Who knows, you know, if he would have lived to tell his story about mm-hmm. everything that, you know, went on at the concert. And that's happened to him personally. This dude right. can barely fall asleep without hearing the screams. And... Yeah seeing the images that he saw of people at the concert yelling for help, dead bodies packed on top of each other, black, blue, yellow, just you could see people not have life in them. He has mm-hmm. to sleep in the bed with his older sister. And even mm-hmm. then, he's laying mm-hmm. awake, petrified. He'll go in yeah. and out of sleep. It's, it's just like, I don't, PTSD is a term for it. 
Every time he yeah. closes his eyes, he hears the concert, he hears the music, the people, he sees the lights and everything. I'm like, oh my goodness, this poor boy. And he had someone come up to his house and take a picture of his license plate. And I'm like, mm. okay, what first, What reason would there be to come up to his house and do that? Who was that? How they know where he lived? You know? Right. And, and his um, peoples was in the kitchen cooking to put the oven and everything. And it all oh, yeah, and they had a, a start of the fire. Yes. And yeah. I got screenshots yeah, all of this. Yeah, you sent me the picture. Yeah, they yeah so I'm not casting. The fire started yes. in the boy's kitchen. Everything so, that I'm saying, he said, yeah. I, I think they bought back some spirits with them from that Astroworld thing because he's been going through it. I want to bring on some more people as well yeah. um, to speak. But I know gotcha, there's some gotcha. people saying in the chat, too, that Travis was even telling people, if you don't have a ticket, just come. I haven't personally seen that tweet, but I see people saying right. it. Um, and like I said in the documentary, there's no way in hell that was 50,000 people. No way. Because initially... If you go back and see the receipts that I posted, right. they were bragging about it being sold out to 100,000 people way back in May. So how did it go from 100,000 people that Travis is bragging about right. Forbes magazine and who was the other one, whatever clip I had, um, they all confirmed in May there was 100,000, but now they're saying 50,000. But mm -hmm. you can't even take that as literal because you have so many kids breaking down the barriers. Now, what really had me shook with these kids exactly. is I'm watching them, and I, and I got different angles. It wasn't all the front. Some was from the side. When I'm watching these kids breaking down the barriers with their bare hands and breaking down fencing, some of these children legit look possessed. Some of these children, they, they, they remind me, remember like how the, uh-huh. And that, um, it was a view, it was like face front, and you can see them trampling over top of each other. And even then, they were, you know, screaming in pain, oh, I can't move, oh, just clawing over each other just to get in. I'm like, that right there looks like hell to me. Literally stepping on people as if they were bridges. These kids were literally in like some type yeah. of trance. Some t and this was during the day. This was not at night. This was during the day before the festival even started. And it almost right. reminded me of that Game of Thrones scene with the White Walkers. How like the Night King would just raise his arms and all the dead people would just get up. And then they would just keep coming. You know, no matter how many times you fought right. them and broke their skeletons, it was just more and more coming. And that's what it looked like to me. You'd have these security guards trying to fight them and trip them and pull them. And they would literally Push slam them. these kids onto the ground. The, the kids mad. would fall and jump. Yes, the kids would fall and jump right back up and keep running. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, it was crazy. Like, you if you watch the me. videos of these kids, yes. They yeah. were literally grabbing them and slamming them. Girls, too. It was crazy. Wow. Just to see that part was just insane to me. I'm like, these kids look possessed. Like, nothing is going to stop them from seeing their Night King, a.k.a. Travis and Scott. Every I single one of them that got put down. And they got yeeted. I guess the security was mad because they couldn't contain them all. But it was this dude. He was just yeeting them kids, pushing them, shoving them. They Flaming laid them up kids. in the air, falling back. <laughs> Did a flip. Jumped got right back, back up and kept running. I'm like, what type of zombie stuff is this? Yeah, it was crazy. I'm going to start bringing people on stage. Please make sure you're muted until um until I ask you to unmute yourself. So I'm going to bring a few people on here, but just make sure you're muted first so you're not talking at the same time. Um, Muchilla, you want to go ahead and unmute your microphone? Hey, T. Hey, Miss Muchilla, how you doing? I'm okay. I I heard about this early in the morning. How well, actually, late at night, where they they did a um, a, it, they it did something on CNN where they interrupted everything, but I didn't know it was gonna be this bad. Yeah, it, it th that documentary you did was amazing. Thank you for taking the time out to break everything down from the beginning of his career until where we are with this whole concert. And he was already a dark artist, like you you showed. Mm -hmm. He was already a dark artist, but with this, everything with seeing the demons and and things like that, and then with him doing, it seemed like he was in a trance himself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And and when he was doing that 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 moaning or whatever he was mm -hmm. doing, 
that's what I don't even think he knew what was going on in the audience at some point. No, he was definitely not physically or mentally there. He was very entranced. And remember, that's why I, even near the end of the documentary, I, I hit on the frequencies. Because that was a repeat thing that I was seeing as I was going through all the, the, the videos and listening to the firsthand accounts. Everybody kept saying there was this weird music. It didn't have any lyrics. It didn't really have any beat. It was just this constant, like this weird noise. And that frequency mm-hmm. was And then when he people. was doing that, that moaning, like, ooh, mm-hmm. when he was doing all of that, that right there, it, you could tell he was in a trance. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.